Good morning, everybody. Can we stand and just honor the Lord this morning? I was thinking about just all the things, words that we've been hearing this week, and it's like, God, wow, there is just so much, so much you, you've given us. And I asked him this morning, is there, is there a word that I can give to you and, and, and welcome online? And the word was peace. And that is so good to know that, that in the midst of everything that we're learning, everything that, that he wants to do in us, that he's our peace, that we don't have to strive to grab after stuff, but just say, Lord, Lord Jesus, here I am. Fill me. Let's do this again. <laughs> and just to share with you during worship, Steve, yesterday, I saw myriads and myriads of, of people in white robes staring at the king on his throne and not one person felt insecure they, because they were fixed on him because I've, I've thought in the past before I've been in big crowds and you know you can feel sometimes lonely in crowds but there was not one one insecure person because we had our focus and our gaze upon the Lord upon the king on the throne so thank you, Lord, today that we can set our, our eyes and fix our heart on you again today. Come, Holy Spirit, like you have been so faithful every day. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Everybody said amen. Just want you, Jesus. We just want you, Jesus. We just want you, Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, yeah. We want you, Jesus. We just want you, yeah. And you can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. I agree, little one.
the morning when I rise in the morning when I rise in the morning when I rise just give me Jesus give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world Just give me Jesus Just want you, Jesus. We just want you, Jesus. We just want you. <laughs> Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Nothing else matters than to be with you. My soul is satisfied. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all of this world.
can I ever comprehend the glory that has no end? It's Jesus. Help me to understand and take me now by your hand, Jesus. Reveal yourself to me all the mysteries of Jesus Give me Jesus Give me Jesus You can have all this world This world, you can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. Jesus. So if it's dying. If it's gold, if it's rubies, let the truth now be told. If it's you, Jesus, we want it. If it's feathers, if it's gemstones, if it's oil dripping down from your throne, if it's you, Jesus, we want it. We 
want you with all of you don't hold back don't hold back we want you we want you with all of you don't hold back don't hold back we want you Jesus we want you We want you, Lord. We want you, Jesus. All of you, Lord. Don't hold back, cause we won't hold back. We want you. Oh, we won't hold back. We won't hold back. We want you. We won't hold back. We won't hold back. We want you. No matter what it looks like, Lord, no matter what it feels like, Lord, oh, we want you. If you're in it, Lord, count us in. Whatever you're doing, Lord, we want in. We want in. If it's healing or a banana or Charmin or manna, if it's you, Jesus, we want it. So let it be on earth as it is, Lord. Let it be on earth as it is, Lord. Come on, let it be in me as it is in heaven. We won't hold. There's no withholding. We won't shrink back. We're going to grab on to your heart, Lord, and never let go. Grab on to your heart, Lord, and never let go. Cause you're all we want, you're all we've ever needed. So be it unto us according to your will. Whatever it is you want to do, Lord, start with me, start with me, Lord. Over here, Lord, start with us, God. Oh, light the fire, Lord, in us. Let it start with us, Lord. Here we are over here, the ones your eyes keep looking for, the ones your eyes keep searching to and fro. Over here, Lord, over here, Lord, hear our cries, hear our prayers, receive our worship, receive our praise. So let it be said of us, they gave it all, they give everything they have. You know that group over there, they don't withhold anything from Jesus. They lay it all on the altar. Some may say they're a little crazy, but crazy is good, crazy is good. Oh Lord, whatever it takes, Whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes, oh God, we want you. We want to see your kingdom come. Your will be done. 
want to see your kingdom come, your will be done, Lord, in me as it is in heaven, in us as it is in heaven, Lord, in us as it is in heaven. So give me Jesus. You can have all the rest. one thing I desire and I will see and I will dwell in your house all the days of my life and to behold your beauty and to ask of you in your temple to inquire of you so what do you want Lord besides it all Here's our heart, Lord, on the altar. Let us be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. just want all all of you Jesus I just want all all of you Jesus cause nothing in this world could ever compare to your glory and your grace and the love that we share I just want all of you Just want all and all of you, Jesus. I just want all, all of you, Jesus. Cause nothing in this world could ever compare. Your glory and your grace and the love that we share and I just want all of you there is no well to measure what you're worth there is no love that could ever touch as deep peace like a flood that covers the earth you're all I want you're all I need Lord. and I just want all all of you Jesus Just want all, all of you, Jesus. Cause nothing in this world could ever compare to your glory and your grace and the love that we share. And I just I want all. There is no joy to express the way I feel. There is 
there's no dance to show how my heart beats for you oh hope like a spring that waters my soul you're It's pure delight, pure delight, Lord, loving you, loving you, knowing you.
Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord of all. Jesus, and you're the Lamb of God who is worthy. The name above all names that is holy. You're the King of kings who is righteous, Jesus Christ. You're the Lamb of God who is worthy, the name above all names that is holy. You're the King of kings who is righteous. Christ, yeah. For sin was crucified to give eternal life. So I will never die, Jesus. By your abounding. My soul is saved to you the highest praise of Jesus. You're the Lamb of God who is worthy, the name above all names that is holy. You're the King. Righteous Jesus Christ, yeah. you're the Lamb of God who is worthy. The name of all all names that is holy. You're the King of Kings who is righteous. Jesus Christ. Your authority in all of heaven, I have the victory. I have the victory, I have the victory, I have the victory, I have, I'm going to sing it till you get it, <laughs> I have the victory, I have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory. Jesus. So now my worship flows unto your holy throne so that your name is known. Jesus, come on, yeah. You're the Lamb of God who is worthy. The name above all names that is holy. You're the King of Kings who is righteous. Jesus Christ, yeah. You're the
Jesus, 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 we lift your name up, we lift your name up, glorious, victorious, Jesus, we lift your name up, we lift your name Jesus, 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 we lift your name up, we lift your name up, glorious, victorious, Jesus, we lift your name up. Christ, our God, our living God. No. 
nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus oh yes lord what a name 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 <laughs> hallelujah we celebrate the name of jesus it's written on our hearts today lord you branded us god you branded us your very own so take the fire iron lord and stamp our hearts today stamp our hearts with your name lord oh death could not hold you the veil torn before you he silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no evil now and forever god you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, and nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. Ha! For you are raised to life again, because you have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name, the name. Of Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. On our hearts, Lord. Write your name deep in our spirit. And they carried with them the name of Jesus. For they had been awakened to their identity. For they had been awakened for the harvest. And they carry a name with them. Wherever they go into the darkness, into the deep, dark places, the name of Jesus goes before them, and they will not fear. Because no power on heaven or on earth can stand against the name of Jesus. So as they went, as they went on the highways and the byways, the name of Jesus went before them, prepared a way. 
and the name of Jesus surrounded them like a ring of fire and everything that tried to touch them that was not of him was burnt in his fiery passion these are the sons of God these are the sons of God and I see them rising up up out of the ashes a mighty army rising with the name of Jesus written in their hearts stamped in their hearts branded on their hearts and they bore a witness to the name wherever they go for it was not with word not with fancy words or speech but it was with power and with love they went in the name of Jesus for they had been awakened to the harvest and they had spent a week together in camp in training in grace boot camp And they were armored with the full armor of God. With peace, love, and salvation accompanied them. And they were a witness on the very corners of the earth. They went forth from the camp. Armed with the spirit. Armed with a song in their heart. For these are the difference makers. These are those who simply love just to love because of the nature that's in them, the nature of Jesus. These are the first commandment lovers of God who reciprocate love by ascending, receiving, and releasing. does an end time harvest looks like it looks like one person and another person just loving each other strangers but one thing in common father father though they may not know you Lord we know that you love them before they even know you so Lord we ask burn it deep in our hearts today your name Jesus burn your name in our hearts today here and there. Come alive. Come alive. Live. We cry out to dry bones. Come alive. Come alive. We cry out to dead hearts. Come alive. Come alive. And up out of the ashes we will see an army rise we cry out to dry bones come alive come on ah, we cry out to dry bones come alive come alive we cry out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes we will see an army rise we cry out to dry bones come alive hey. oh we cry out to dry bones come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes we will see an army rise we cry out to dry bones come alive we cry out to dry bones come alive and we 
Seek out and explore new harvest fields. To go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Empowered by peace. Driven by love. If you accept this, I will self-destruct. Do you accept this mission? Do you accept this mission? Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. call him captain of the host or nothing. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, just lift your hand. There's importation for all of that we were just talking about. By the way, it was about you guys. Come on, just receive that. I just see it. I can see it in the spirit. You've been in camp. It's funny you call it camp, but hey, come on. This is like Holy Ghost fill me up with love camp. And I see each one of you. You're, you're, you've got this medal. This medal that says Jesus. <laughs> ah, man. Darren, can you just lay hands on everybody right now? Just, just go. Just, just quit. Yeah, it's there. It's just there. It's there. We just agree. We touch and we agree. <laughs> I'd do it, but I'm going to keep playing. Just do it. Seriously. I don't know. It just, there's like, it's like the seal. Come on. Come on, receive. Receive power from on high. Yeah, receive your commissioning today. Come on, you're commissioning. You're being commissioned. Oh, in the name of Jesus. The general, General Darren, is giving you his medals of honor. Oh, you're being commissioned. Your mission. It's a winning mission. Your assignment is a winning assignment. Your assignment is one of victory. Oh yeah, you'll go out with joy. You'll go out with joy. For they shall go out with joy and come reaping. Reaping the heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. 
Lord, we receive that commissioning today in the name of Jesus. Wow, that's so good. That is so good. dry bones come alive come alive we cry out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes we will see an army rise we cry out to dry bones come alive come on sing it as your commission we could <laughs> we call out to dry bones come alive come alive we call out to dead hearts come alive come alive up out of the ashes let us see an army rise we cry out to die bones come alive all right now we're right where you are just begin to call it out call them out can these dry bones live can these dead hearts live again can they come to life? Oh, hallelujah. Whoa. We receive your commission, Lord. Let the army rise. Let the mighty army rise. Up out of the ashes. Whoa. <laughs> receive your commissioning today. Oh, yeah, yeah. The army of love the army of love it's a love war oh, with mercy and grace we go faith hope and love faith hope and love faith hope and love faith hope and love yeah faith hope and love faith hope and love faith hope and love faith, hope, and love. Yeah, so good. We call out a dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out a dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, we will see an army rise. We call out a dry bones, Come alive. Come on, lift your hands right where you are. Wow. Lord, seal it. As General Darren is passing out the medals of honor, just received the seal from the Holy Spirit. Whoa. Yeah. The stamped seal of approval. Come on, you guys. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servants. Hallelujah. That's it. Just received by the Holy Spirit.
just hear the Lord saying just something real simple as there is a code of honor in the military which states no one left behind let that be your commissioning today no one left behind you can do it you guys it don't take a lot of you. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Some 
sometimes we wrestle with, with, with people that were not capable of, of loving us. And, and sometimes when it comes to love, we immediately look to other, other people as being the, the reason why we're incapable of loving. But I feel like there's an anointing here this morning where we can kind of get past that. We can kind of get past some of those, those things within our past that have, that have kept us from being able to walk in love and, and that have kept us from being full of the Father's love. And I think, I think it begins when we, when we say that there's nothing that we can do about other people. There's nothing that we can do about, about previous authority in our lives. There's nothing we can do about other people's decisions. But we can make a decision. We can make a choice. You know, there's nothing we can do about, about people that are, that maybe never, never necessarily came into a mature expression of love except that we can make the choice to step into the invitation of the Father, to step into a fuller manifestation of the Father's love, and that we can truly show an expression of love in that, by God's grace, we can release love to those who don't deserve it. And we can allow the love of God to come and to cover us so that we can get untethered and unanchored from those past painful events that have tried to define us and keep us from engaging with our destiny. And it's by, it's by our choice to say, there's nothing we can do about other people, but there's something that we can do about ourselves. We can choose to be a people of love, of the Father's love. And we can state that no, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the pain, that we will be a people who are patient, that we will be a people who are kind, that we will be a people who don't partner with envy or boasting in and of ourselves or our own glory. We will not be a arrogant people, but we will be a humble people and a gentle people. We will not be a rude people. But we will be a people of, of the love of God, a generation of the Father's love that rejoices in righteousness. So, Father, we thank you for your grace that's in this place. And, Father, I ask, Father, for those who have been wrestling with the ability to love, that have been wrestling with, with previous events within the past that have almost kept us from being able to love. And, Father, Lord, I pray that even as we engage with your love, that we'd be reminded of the greatest expression of love ever seen throughout all humanity. And that's when God came in the form of a man. That when Jesus came and died because of love, that he gave himself for those who are crucifying him, that he gave himself for us so that we would know a full expression of love. And Father, we pray that we would be like Jesus, that there would be such a love that's, that's been rubbed into the contents of our heart, that the more cruel people are, the more we just kind of fall in love with them, the more, well, the more our hearts just kind of get taken with them. And Father, we ask, Lord, we ask that you would download your Papa heart into our heart so that we could be real good Papas and Mamas on the earth. That, that how many of you know that, um, that you, can, you can be a papa and a mama without even having biological children? How many of you know that, that Eve was called the mother of all living things before she ever had um, any children? But how many of you know that before we can be a papa, before we can be a mama, first we have to learn how to be a son, how to be a daughter? But here's what happens. Sometimes things happen through authority. Sometimes things happen through our own moms and dads and and sometimes the enemy comes to say, you can't trust the mom. You can't trust the dad. You got you to gotta become your own mom. You got to become your own dad. And sometimes there's that, that, that orphan thinking that comes in that I'm on my own. I, I am on my own. I can't really trust anybody. I got I to gotta prove myself. I got to show the world what I got. I got to show everybody what I got. And we go through life being our own mom, being our own dad. And I got good news for you this morning. You don't have to be your own father. You don't have to be your own mother. That you have this incredible heavenly father who is absolutely trustworthy. 
And as you begin to just trust in him, as you just begin to love in him, love on him, all of a sudden he begins to come and he begins to renew your mind. And all of a sudden he begins to download you with supernatural grace where you become capable of loving those who don't deserve to be loved. And you, you become capable of literally changing atmospheres. You become capable of, of, of displacing that orphan disposition that's tried to identify a whole generation. And I'm telling you, there is a new level of trust and honor and respect there's a new level of power that's going to begin to flow through a generation because we're not lusting after power but we're in love with the Father and His Father is coming and is being downloaded inside of us and now we're being motivated and driven by love. Yeah? Yeah? So Father, we receive Your love right now. We receive Your love right now. We receive your undeserved kindness right now. We, do, we receive, Father, the waterfalls of your mercy and your grace. We receive right now washing and cleansing. Father, we pray, Lord, I pray that right now, Lord, that even that your love would come and remove the, 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 the sting of the past. Lord, that your love would come and break every chain that's tried to anchor us back to 1984 or 1992. <laughs> and we just declare, by your grace, we're moving forward into a greater expression and manifestation of the Father's love and kindness. And we will be kind to those who don't deserve it. And we will walk, we will walk in that servant-hearted posture of Christ Jesus that subverts that demonic paradigm of power that tries to influence everything within our Western culture. We thank you, Father, that you are changing us, <laughs> that you are molding us. Father, that you're doing a beautiful thing in our hearts. And we thank you, Father, for what's been established in our hearts, what's been sealed over our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name. If you're like in agreement with at least 50 to 70% of what I said, say amen. 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 Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's give a big thank you to Steve. Amazing, amazing. I apologize. I missed the, I missed the first part of it. But I was, I, was trying to, I was trying to do breakfast and get all, all my kids out, out the door for a field trip. But, but I made it, and it's good to be here. Today's going to be an awesome day. Miranda Nelson's here with us this morning. Charlie Shamp's going to be ministering tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get started, um, we're going to receive an offering and give an opportunity just to sow into camp meeting. It's our heart really to honor uh, uh, our speakers, to really honor Miranda and just all these generals. How, how many of you just enjoyed these literal generals that have been coming through this week? I mean, it's just been, it's just been incredible. There's something about honoring a prophet, you know? There's something about, um, there's something about taking a, 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 a part of your heart and sowing into a prophet. And, and, and literally, um, not that I'm trying to typecast all these speakers as just, just a prophet, because, I mean, they're just walking, but there's, there's, there's a principle there of honoring a prophet. And so this morning, um, I, I, let's, let's practice that principle of honor this morning. And I would just ask that you would consider um, uh, just sowing into, um, sowing into these generals, sowing into uh, 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 these ones that have given their lives to literally travel the nations. You know, uh, uh, this, uh, all these guys that have been through here this weekend, Steve Swanson, they've, they've made incredible sacrifices to, to wash the feet of the bride of Christ. You know, it's easy to sit back and say, oh, wow, they, they, they're, they're living the dream. I mean, all, all they have to do is get on airplane after airplane after airplane and, and sit on 20-hour 20 20 airplane rides and live in hotel and hotel. And, I mean, that's the dream. Let me tell you something. If, if you've ever done it, it's not, it's not the dream. I mean, it's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible sacrifice to run, to run to nations and to do this kind of thing. And so, uh, Miranda, we, we honor the sacrifices that you've made, that, that you and Jeremy have made. Um, you guys have uh, you guys have paid a, a tremendous cost in order to do what you're doing, Charlie Champ. We honor you, bro, and uh, the sacrifice that, that you've made. You know, you're um, you've paid a, a huge cost, a huge price to walk in what you're walking in. And Steve Swanson, we honor you, man, and just um, the the depth of that well that's in you. I know you've paid uh, such a tremendous 
such a tremendous price. And thank you for being here. We honor you, bro. As man, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've tried to make it simple to give with a check. If I mean, there's a generation that don't even know what checks are anymore. But hey, if if that if that's your thing, that's totally cool. You just go SRC or. Uh, uh, that's shorter than writing out Seattle Revival Center, so just go SRC. And um, if you want to give with cash, um, you can do that. There's envelopes in the seat packs. Um, if you'd like to give with a credit card, you can do that. If you're watching online, um, there's a phone number at the bottom of the screen. It's 425-441-3403. So send a text message. You can do that right now. Uh, and put in the amount. So instead of saying, like, hey, Darren, what's up? Put 1.5 million. And then put in 425 425- 441-3403. God bless you as you give online. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. True. Just for your kindness. And for your big daddy heart that you have for Seattle. And Lord, we just ask that even throughout the rest of the day today, that there would, there would be like just downloads, that there would just be heavenly blueprints that are downloaded into our heart where, where there's this discovery of a piece of our uh, identity and destiny where we can see our significance for being on the earth in such a time as this. And Lord, we ask that part of the fruit of this, of this week would be just this new sense of urgency that we really do matter, that, you re- that we really do matter to you, and that we really are capable of doing some tremendous kingdom works on this earth and in this region. And Father, we ask that even as people have been sowing throughout this whole week, Lord, we ask that there would just be um, uh, uh, all kinds of crazy, abundant fruit that begins just to, just begins to come forth. Lord, I, Lord, I ask, like, Father, that there'd be, like, fruit that even starts to come out even this next week. Lord, like, whether it's um, dreams and visions from what Jeremy released or just a greater awareness of the glory from what Mahesh released or if it's, or if it's literal, literal engagement with the face of Jesus as Charlie was releasing yesterday or if it's literally a new um, uh, 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 awareness of the manifest fire of God that, that Miranda was releasing last night. That, that whatever, it, whatever it looks like, Father, we ask that there would be immediate fruit as a result of, of people's investment into, uh, into this week of refreshing, into this week of a awakening and harvest and father we 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 do we count it in honor to be able to take a part of our heart and to release it and to sow it and father i pray that you would bless each and every person every family each and every city represented here today for your glory for your supremacy for the establishment of your kingdom we pray in jesus name Everyone said, Hey, God bless you. Gift. Love you guys. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Oh, love is all you need. Love is all you need. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> ah. Okay, so we, we my heart right before when I made a note and one and and that is I was walking by the product tables you know because we're doing that admin kind of thinking of um, how we're finishing up here and finishing well and um, you know I I was just really God really highlighted to me the young it's funny we've been saying we're generals and that's the word I got at the table there's young generals uh, in the house and and today with three right on the front row and and us looking at 
the product, you know, the, um, the, the, what God has put on the hearts of the young generals is, is just, it's powerful. And it's something to be taken and consumed and made a part of, um, of who you are. So, so when you get a chance, um, when, uh, whoa, it wasn't available, they were, whoa. They weren't available at the beginning of the week, but um, the other day, we've got some um, books from um, Miranda and Jeremy, and and you know the if you if you want to know more about how to be a burning one, I mean Jeremy has an awesome book about that. I, I could probably not carefully name all the names, but I saw the burning one and, and I saw take your place in the kingdom from Miranda, and uh, you know there's those are things that are necessary. We need to be taught. People need to understand. There's people on your heart that you can't. You're not going to get to preach to them or get, bring them to a meeting, but you can give them a book. And um, there's a hunger in the young hearts of, uh, at, and I, you know, I've been asking the Lord for how, where's the door in to the younger hearts, you know, that's what's on my heart is to release everything that we, we need to be releasing everything that we have. And so I'm asking God for high, uh, insight into that. So I saw that, and then I saw John's two books on the mysteries of the cross and grace as your inheritance. I mean, wisdom from someone who's lived and walked it out and then wrote 20 years of things in his heart into two books. How awesome is that, right? And so, and you know, and then there's Pastor Darren. <laughs> You know, pattern interrupt. How many of us get stuck in patterns that are like just destroy and take away from what God's done? So we could be here all week and we can gather and gather and store it up. And, and then we can go slowly into an old pattern that actually takes away from what God gave us. So th his book, A Pattern Interrupt, is just pr it's practical but so spiritual as well because it shows you how to break the patterns that interrupt what God's trying to do in your life. And there's simple things that we can all do. So um, that, that's really all I wanted to give you today. And those of you online, you can, and Steve Swanson's music is sold out here on, in the house, but he has a website full of awesome... I don't even need to describe Steve Swanson because I can't. <laughs> and I'll just cry and that'll be that. But, you know, check out his website. And, and I, don't, I can't remember it. I know it's Bride, Bridegroom or something. You Google Steve Swanson and you'll find it. SteveSwanson.org. SteveSwanson.org. See there? Okay? And you get some worship and you, and, and you start playing that in your life and see what God does. Go back where, you, you know, Darren's been explaining that on the app. You can listen to the worship. You can listen to the word. And it's all free. And, and just take advantage of that and let God just soak you more and more and more in what he's done. Because this is grand finale week, right? Remember? The, that's what the Lord said at the beginning. This is a grand finale week. And we are, he is pouring out and re, and over what he has done in these past few seasons here because we are about to step into brand new. All right? So I love you guys. Thank you. Pastor Darren. Okay, you know what to say, right? And if you're tweeting, that, uh, you know, please use hashtag so good Jeanette. That'd be great. Um, actually, uh, I remember the first time I ever went to Bethel, and I, and I just loved how when, when Pastor Bill would preach, you'd hear like, oh, so good, Bill. And I, I mean, I just, I, just, I, just, I just love that. And so I started using that all the time. Like, so I'd be, like, I'd be like at Denny's eating a Grand Slam, and I'd just be like, Ah, so good, Bill. And then, um, and then a lot of my teams started using that. And so um, there was a particular Sunday I was preaching, and somebody yelled out, "So good, Bill!" Um, so that's a little story. And then, uh, but anyway, so we have "So Good Jeanette" is "So Good Jeanette" as as well. You know, it's kind of funny with the book thing. Um, so I was contacted by kind of a big, kind of a big publisher um, about. Uh, over a year ago, a year and a half ago, and they said, "Hey, um, you know, we've been following, we've been following Seattle and what God's doing there, and and so um, we're wondering if 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 you're writing anything or if you'd like to write something." 
And so I said, well, yeah, I have, but I, I'm just going to self-publish. I'm just going to do it myself because um, I'm not really looking at going through, going through a publisher. And, and they said, well, like, well, maybe you should go through a publisher. And I said, you know, uh, and this is a pretty big publisher, right? And I said, well, here, here's the deal. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 34 years old, and I'm a dude, okay? And so uh, I don't read a lot. I don't read a lot of books. And, and, I, and actually, I don't know if I've ever read a book written b by your publishing house, you know? So I don't know if you're readers are actually going to read the kind of book that I would that 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 I've been writing and so they said well what, what are you what are you working on I said well I'm, I, at the time it was going to be called 20 minute um, 20 minute pattern interrupt you know and the, the idea was 20 minutes a day and keep Satan away so anyway so I was like I, I, I pitched this whole I pitched this whole kind of thing right and she was like I love it I, I mean I love that I would like to present that and I was like I'm telling you uh, you're, you're not going to like it. <laughs> and so, anyways, I went, I, so just, just for the, I, I just wanted to experience the whole process, right, of, of submitting something, going through the process, good learning opportunity. So I did, I, like, I, I sent, sent everything over, uh, filled, out, filled out all the questionnaires and everything, and sent it over, and then, and then she called me back and said, y yeah, you know, she was like, I, I read your introduction in the first chapter, she's like, I couldn't stop laughing. She said, I thought it was great, but it doesn't necessarily meet up with the objectives of what our, <laughs> what our publishing house is trying to do. And I was like, I told you that. I already told you that. And so, um, so anyways, I, I went forward, got, got it done, uh, published it myself. That was the original plan. And, um, and, uh, and, it's, and it's done great. I mean, I, it's been incredible. The response has been, uh, been amazing. Um, uh, and so there, there's a few reviews on Amazon. And my favorite one is... I don't know who this gal is, but uh, the review of my book is this. Um, uh, she's like, um, don't be distracted by the cover. The book is actually pretty good. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, what is that mean? Like, you don't like comic books? What? What? You know, I, anyways. Um, so, uh, so anyways, if you're out there at the book, at the book table, don't be distracted by the cover. The book's actually pretty good, appar apparently. That's one, that's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the, re one of the reviews. Good, good times. Awesome. Well, hey, you're in for uh, a real treat. How many of you were here last night uh, from Miranda Nelson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. How many of you, like, that's been the desire of your, of your heart is to know the fiery heart of God's love for, for you? I, I mean, absolutely, right? And that's what I love about Miranda. That's, that's what she walks. She walks in the fiery heart of God's love. It just, it's just, I mean, it's just all over you, Miranda. Like, whenever, like, you're just like, wah, you know? And, and it's just, and it's just awesome. It's, it's so cool that you were able to, uh, like, I was getting so nervous because I heard about London breaking out, and I was like, how are they going to do San Diego and London and then the new building project? Like, I, I was like, are J Jeremy and Miranda even going to, and, I, and I, I remember Jeanette contacted me, and she's like, Jeremy and Miranda have confirmed, and I said, thank you, God, they're coming, you know? And so everyone just say, thank you, Lord. Miranda's here. Would you please welcome today, this morning, Miranda Nelson. Come on. Thank you, guys. Come on. God is good. Amen. Come on, say, so good, Darren. <laughs> I'm like, you got to get the name right at least. You know, if you're if you're talking to him, man, don't call him Bill. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back with you guys this morning. Uh, you guys good this morning? Yeah. Come on, I love the worship, man. Steve, we just love you. You're just amazing. You carry it so good. Oh yeah, there you go. So good, Steve. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I'm happy to be with you guys. I'm excited because I don't think the Lord changed my word this morning. <laughs> Praise God. It's once in a blue moon that happens that he doesn't change it on me last minute. So um, I thought he was about to. But um, before we jump in, I, you know, I believe this is going to be an impartation service. I want to, um, if we're cool with that, lay hands on everybody at the end. Um, but I really have a, a, have a word that I believe, you know, is going to empower uh, and, you know, 
do some stuff for you guys. It'll be good. You'll, you'll see. You'll see. But before I jump in, I want to invite my four sweet interns up here and also Angie, who she is our intern director. She's super, super anointed, walks in revival. Really, she does. But I just asked these guys if um, they had any words of knowledge or prophetic words. Um, I want both Kareen and Amanda to share the prophetic word that or the vision that you guys had. Just really quickly, just share that vision that you had because it ties in with um, the worship and I believe that it'll just, you know, bless you guys to receive as they give these. Okay, so I'm looking and I see this welcome mat and then it, the, the camera like pans up and there's like this entrance to this huge palace and all these um, like royalty start to walk in and they like line up in rows and they all start bowing like up and down and then the camera pans up more and there's this huge throne and Jesus is sitting on the throne. Um, he's the same size as all the royalty, but the throne is huge. And he's in this palace, and there are pillars, like, all around, and they're all just, like, worshiping Jesus. And they're all royalty. So that, I just believe that the Lord is, again, raising up that army, that generation of royal lovers, royal worshipers. They were bowing down. It represents, you know, the throne room and the authority of God released in that place of worship. Amen. He's raising up you, his royal sons and daughters, amen, to walk as co-heirs with Jesus. How many know the Bible says that, right, in Ephesians? Uh, it talks about being co-heirs with Christ. Romans talks about being co-heirs with Christ. And so... So I believe that that's something the Lord's been releasing even this morning is that realm of authority and royalty, amen, as worshiping lovers, amen. So Kareen has something similar. Yeah, um, I saw people getting um, commissioned and like commissioned like they're on their knee and being commissioned with a sword. And I saw even people getting, um, getting, getting a crown um, from, made from flowers. And, uh, and I saw after that, I saw... Um, as as people here like or the church or the, the the revival has been like literally crossing a river but now in this season like, you're, gonna, you're gonna be crossing like the ocean like i feel like just like it's gonna be a season like really going to into even farther in a way like to, to touching even like other nations with whatever's going on here so it's now it's crossing the ocean and the river is already being crossed so crossing into the promises of God. Amen. Come on. That's awesome. How many know when they crossed the river Jordan, it was into the promised land, into their inheritance. Amen. Come on. That's good, girls. Do you guys have uh, words of knowledge or prophetic word? Uh, I actually have something for you. I don't remember what your name is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I, I know that you're doing this supernatural school that starts here soon, and I was just really feeling like God's going to really honor your hunger for him. I was just feeling like that all over you, and that, you know, everything you sacrifice, he's really just, he's going to come through and he's going to bring you the abundance and he's going to take care of you. And you just have this, like, really infectious joy about you as well. And I just really feel like, um, like, through good times and bad, like, that joy is going to really reach out to people and that they're going to be like, oh, my goodness, what have you got? I just really feel like God's going to use that joy that you carry to really touch other people's lives around you. Actually, this is for the camera girl. <laughs> um, so this one's for you. And um, I, I kept saying, I keep seeing Mordecai written, written over you. And I was asking God, well, wh what, what does that mean exactly? And I feel like a lot of people know the story of Esther and how she saved the Jews and stuff. But um, Mordecai had a big um, role to play in that. And I feel like God was saying, um, I heard him say that uh, there was because of your faithfulness to this house, um, and being a watchwoman, uh, that the Lord will delight himself writing you in the book of memorable deeds and clothing you in royal robes. Um, and I feel like that's going to be something over you that God really wants. Like, he's really proud of you for being a watchwoman in this house. And I don't think it just means the camera. I think it means like you're, you're actually um, focusing on everything here and you pray for everybody here. Um, even when not everybody notices, you know, you're just behind the camera and stuff. But like God really wants to highlight you. a word for you. What's your name? You, you, yes. No? Who, me? Yes. <laughs> What's your name? Tom. Would you, would you stand up? <laughs> Tom, I just feel like God wants to celebrate and honor who you are. Um, I feel like you stand a lot of times in the background, but you have a very tender heart and you have a very 
uh, kind and, and gentle heart. And um, I just see you almost like a military guy. You're like, you're an empowerer. You empower other people. And uh, your, your voice, you have a like very uh, strong voice. Um, and I just see you speaking into like young generation. I also saw you like a bridge. Um, and it's like people who are stuck uh, in certain areas in their life, uh, I feel like your voice just comes and it pushes them to the other side, to the side of breakthrough. Um, yeah, so I just bless you with that. I bless you with that. I bless you with even more spiritual children in your life that you get to pour into them. And I also feel like God is uh, downloading blueprints. Like you have a common sense that's actually Holy Spirit sense. Uh, you just walk in a place and you you just figure things out. You figure how to like fix things, how to do things in a way that is actually divine. So I bless you with that. <laughs> um, I have a word for the young boy sitting in like the third row. Fourth row. <laughs> um, yeah, I, what's your name? William. Um, yeah, I just saw you being a leader in your school and bringing unity to your school. And I feel like people are really going to be drawn to you. And you're going to, like, in the system of high school, you're going to be, like, high up. And you're going to be able to use that, um, that level to reach those who are feeling outcast. So, yeah, God, we just pray for strength over him and wisdom over him um, as he's going into high school, that you would keep him strong and you would help him to love others above all else, Father, and that he would be able to bridge the gap between... Um, between the different groups within his high school, God. So we just declare unity over his life and everywhere that he goes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, um, the lady in the back. Um, let me see, okay. Yes, yeah, all the way back, the one have the green shirt behind her. Um, can you stand up? Yes. Hi, what's your name? Mavis. Mavis. Um, Mavis, I really feel just like the Lord, um, just he's just like want to refresh, like want to just have refreshment over you and like, um, and it's like there's a breakthrough like over your, there's like in your health, like God's going to just like refreshment over that and just like, um, whatever this season that passed that it's been really hard, just God wanted to know, like it's just, this, it's now, you get the breakthrough is now and whatever you believe in for, um, does that make sense in any ways? And like, I feel like he's like, he want to give you even uh, restoration in your energy, like just to boost your energy really 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 high just to be able to move forward to continue what you already started and so god we thank you lord god we thank you father for that refreshments over her god and i thank you god for um for that she is a mighty woman or that she trusted in you even in the midst of those hard time father and i thank you god that you've seen her in this time and that you are with her and you carrying her you were carrying her in this time father even when she was feeling like like she like you're literally you're not there but she trusted in you but it was kind of hard but god thank you for her faith in you and that just yes, God is going to reward you on your faith even if you felt it was little but for him it was huge you were still having that faith in him so we'll be, we bless you um, and this one it was kind of funny because I got it yesterday and, and I was not going to do it today but it came up again um, I don't know if someone's planning to open a restaurant or has this dream in their heart about a restaurant. Um, is there somebody here who's like had like just like a, like a distant kind of dream, not necessarily like? Okay. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay, so that's probably close because I like, kind of saw that. Um, I saw a little kid running around that like restaurant type. I saw little tables and people out there, and I saw a little kid running around this particular restaurant. And I felt like God was saying, um, similar to what Darren had delivered yesterday about like the Disney and believing and stuff, childlike faith. And I feel like God really wants to encourage you. And, and then I saw the Nike slogan, the just do it. Um, and I feel like, I feel like God is going to give you the provision for it and uh, the vision, the blueprints to how to do this. Um, because I don't feel like you've, you've probably done this before. Um, but it has been a dream in your heart. And I feel like God is really honoring that. Um, so we just declare that God over her and we just, um, pray for provision, God. And when you give the vision, you give the provision, God. And we just declare that over her, God, give her the blueprints, the right connections, God, to make this happen in Jesus name. Um, does anybody struggle with sleeping? Like it might be night terrors or insomnia at all. Yeah, cool. 
Uh, do you want to just stand up? Cool. Oh, cool. Sorry, hard to see. Cool. If you, if that's you, just want to stand up. Just pray for a Cool, God, we just thank you so much for a restoration of sleep in Jesus' name. We cut off anything that would be um, taking away sleep. We cut off all the assignments of the enemy against your peaceful rest. And we just proclaim the, the rest of God and peace over each one of you. That you're going to have a good night's sleep tonight and all the nights following because Jesus is going to give that to you. What, what's your name in the purple shirt? Rhonda. Rhonda, would you stand up? I just feel your hunger. Um, and I'm just standing there and I could feel like you're hungry, like you're very, very hungry. And I see like, I almost feel the pull that you have on Jesus, you know, and I don't know who you're praying for, but I, I feel like God just wants to assure you that he hears your prayer and he knows the desires of your heart. And I also feel like you're walking in a season where he's kind of like restoring the joy of your of childlikeness. I feel like at an early age, like you had to carry responsibility pretty early. And I feel like God just wants you to walk or he, he is empowering you to walk through joy and just childlikeness where uh, like the burden is just light. Yeah. So I just pray for, for you, Father. I thank you, God, that you honor her heart desires, God. You honor her hunger, God, and uh, that you are responding to her, Father. I thank you for breakthrough and for joy, God, for extreme joy, God, that would fill her house and her household, Father, that she would see uh, your goodness, God, and the treasures of heaven just released in her household. Um, I saw, I saw an old like a chariot, like with have, like have like a horse in the front, and I know there's like someone have an old dream, in, like a ministry that they've been on their heart, and they kind of like they just haven't been pursuing this, and it's been burning in their heart just like recently, like a lot, like it's been burning, and whatever the worship, the word that's been talking about the army rising up, and like I really feel there's someone here that's been believing for this. If, can you stand, please, if it's for anyone? Oh. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Okay, in the back. All right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. Yes, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I really feel the lady in the white. What's your name? Billy? Yeah, Billy. You know, I just like, I really feel that just like the Lord is like, the, t today was like really like the worship and the, like I really felt like there was a burning even more deeper in your heart. Like God's been activating on uh, that, that dream. Like and it's, it's his dream. Like he wants you to know that desire, even though it's been like, it's been a long time, but just like that burning even today is like, he's it's like a reminder. Like, you know, he still wants you to step into it. Doesn't matter how old that dream is. And like, you're like, oh, maybe it's too late, but you can, the Lord wants you to know, like, just like you have that gift that you carry to pursue that dream that it's been like, like he, he trusted in you in it. And he's keep like, just like, come on. He's like cheering you like to still do it. And I really felt that word for the worship today was like for all these people, like you have the dream and to rise you and to pursue, you know, your calling and just um, for the people who's been waiting um, to be reached by you. So God, I thank you for all the people here right now. God, I thank you, God, for the dream that you deposit in their heart, God. And I pray activation right now in the name of Jesus, every dream and every desire, because God, it's your desire. We thank you, Father, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, does anyone live in a pretty big cement house with two pillars in front and like a big wooden double door? Okay, so there are two pillars in the front and there's like a porch and then there's like dark wooden two doors that open up like Okay, that's probably for later. Okay, <laughs> um, is anyone a woodworker? Okay, could you stand up? What's your name? Kathy. Do you sell any of your like stuff that you make? 
Okay, I feel like God just wants to bless your business. Um, so God, we just pray financial provision over her business and over her sales. God, that you would even increase her sales, Father. And yeah, yeah God, I just pray that you would bless her family and that it wouldn't um, cause any rifts within her family, God, that it would be smooth sailing, that her business would be fun, and that <laughs> it would be something that she does to glorify you. So God, we bless her. We bless her business. Uh, we thank you that she's able to um, work with her hands, God. And I pray, yeah, that you would just bless the work of her hands, God, that you would keep her hands strong and that um, she would be able to even expand her business more that's a good word um that house did that make sense to someone as far as like it may not be where you live right now it may be like a house that you grew up in or something a porch two pillars and two wooden doors that open she moved on a little bit quick (laughs) so I just want to make sure like does that make sense to somebody it could be even a family member that lives in that yeah Yeah, your aunt's house Yeah, see, there you go. Sometimes you just got to, we're teaching. These are our beautiful interns, and they're super, aren't they doing amazing? So, (laughs) so see what you get for, for her, for her aunt, maybe. Okay. Um, Why don't you you come over here, and she'll pray for you. You're getting, like, the (laughs) full-on. And um, so your, your aunt is your biological father's sister, and it's been the whole family run through with just an evil spirit. Okay, and maybe let her prophesy before you tell too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just felt like there's something going on in the family. So um, even like loss, like I felt like loss within the family. Um, yeah, so God, we just pray, we declare family restoration over her aunt, God, and we just pray for complete, um, any, any attack of the enemy, we say be gone right now in the name of Jesus, God, we pray angelic protection over her house, and God, we thank you for complete family restoration. Thank you, Yeah, and God, I just thank you, Lord, that you're releasing peace into this home and even into her right now. God, I thank you, Lord, that every ounce of anxiety just goes and lifts off this family, lifts off of our sister right now. God, I thank you for your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding, invading, coming like a flood, coming like a river, washing through this family, washing through this home. And there's someone, there's a young person in your family who um, uh, I believe believe that the Lord is going to touch a young boy in this season that the, does this make, is there, yeah, God's going to touch this young boy in this season. I feel like there's healing and there's also restoration, even with the um, anxiety and stuff that God's going to bring um, healing and bring, there's a destiny on his life. And I just see God releasing dreams in the night season where there were like nightmares and night terrors and stuff. God's going to release dreams. That makes sense. So, God, we just thank you. We just release that in Jesus' name over this family member, Father. And, Lord, we just bless this family, God. We thank you that this family has has your name on it, God. Lord, that that glory and grace would invade this family, God. And, Lord, that everything that's out of order will come into alignment, will come into order in this season. And there's even going to be breakthrough with finances in your family. I'm telling you, where, where you've been believing, where you personally, as well as some of your family members, like, a, a father figure uh, has been um, really believing for breakthrough financially. I'm telling you, um, even with work and stuff, I'm telling you, there's going to be real breakthrough that's going to come in this season uh, with finances and with provision. And, um, and so, God, we just thank you for that, Lord. We just release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. You guys have another word? or You good? Good. Good. Angie, you good? Okay. She has something, but I'm going to give it, I'll call you back up in a second, Okay. Um, this family in the back right here, I'm assuming you guys are a family. Are you a family? Yeah, we're family. You're family, like the four of you, right? Okay, cool. I'm like, unless, you know, the kids are, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> they're yours, okay, and they're yours, right? Okay, awesome. Just going to clarify that. <laughs> um, I just see the Lord just on your home, and I just feel like there is such a place of presence in your home. There, You guys have cultivated such a place of, um, like, it's a dwelling place. I see people gathering even in your home, and just like Bible studies, and just just gathering in your home. Just the, I feel like there's such a faithfulness uh, and such a hospitality that rests upon you. My sister, 
scripture, I just see this servant heartedness that you carry. You walk, the Lord wants you to know that he calls you faithful and he calls you friend. And I'm telling you where you've always put other people before yourself, even your children, you always put people before yourself, but the Lord wants you to know that his eye is upon you and you're a watchman. You're even a watchman for this family. And I just see you as this woman of prayer and who has literally um, plowed the way through prayer. And I felt like even the both of you as a couple, like both individually maybe as well as um, I don't know through situations but I just see that you guys have been through a lot and you've really you've really um, you've really had to push through some stuff I, I feel like even this is like this is you know before you guys were even married like individually I feel like you specifically sir that you you went through a lot in your growing up and that there's there's been a lot where God's literally cultivated the strength of your heart through um, some difficult situations but because of it there's an endurance and there's a longevity that rests upon your family that uh, is that that um, that longevity and perseverance for uh, an endurance for the call and I just see you guys like literally pushing through for other people and um, believing I see you guys believing where people don't have the faith to believe for um, whatever they need uh, and even in family situations I see you guys believing and pushing them into the faith to believe for their miracle um, and I see you guys actually having a ministry to uh, to families and to couples where uh, literally God would use you uh, to to bring um, comfort but also to bring exhortation and to bring uh, counsel uh, to like friends or whoever like I feel like people just open up to you guys and um, just share their hearts and that there's a there's a strong sense of wisdom I feel like there's wisdom on you sir and there's the prophetic is on her and I just see I just see you guys as this tag team duo of just like seeing sharply into people uh, and into their family situations and just releasing the goodness of God and releasing life and releasing and seeing shifts take place, seeing transformation take place. And I also see, um, I see business stuff for you as well. I feel like there's this business anointing on you and, um, and it's not just one thing, but it's multiple things. And I feel like there's things that God's going to even bring um, for expansion. And I feel like um, even... Um, um, I feel like even it's like things ha have only begun in a certain sense, but that there's, but that God's going to expand things fast. And um, I just see the provisions of the Lord over you guys. So, Father, I just thank you for this family, Lord God. I thank you that you see them, Father. Lord, that your eye is upon them. The Bible says that the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. And I just see the eye of the Lord on you guys because you fear the Lord. You walk in godliness. And he loves your he loves your faithfulness to him and um, and I feel like there's even been some things that you've had to make choices that have gone against the grain kind of thing they've gone against what people have even thought you should do and they've even told you otherwise and you've had people that are close to you tell you I wouldn't do that if I were you but you're like you know in your heart and in your spirit that that no 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 God's asking us to do this and, and you've paid a price and you've made decisions that some some of them only God knows, and and you guys together as a family. But but um, I, I see the Lord honors the price that you've paid and the choices that you've made. Where where it's not been pretty in the sense that that you've taken heat from some of it. But but God's going to bless and He's going to bring prom promotion and He's going to bring provision as a result of it. So Father, I just thank you for this family, God. I just thank you, Lord, that you release God your glory on them, Father. Lord, I thank you, God, for your your glory resting on them. Lord, on these children, Lord God, Lord, that they would see and they would hear so clearly. Do you play the piano at all, sweetie? Yeah, I see the piano. I saw you playing the piano. And God's really going to anoint you, your fingers, to play the piano. And uh, and I'm telling you, you're going to make this beautiful music. And I see you even as you grow older, that God's going to give you a gift to even write music. And so, Father, I just I just call that out in her, Lord. I thank you for the creativity. I feel like this one has a creative, like an artist kind of gift. Like, I see you, I see you, like, drawing and, and doodling and um, this, like, this... This, I see the mind of God, like God's given you a brilliant mind, but also this creative thing of, of, of drawing and 
You're going to see that come out. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for these creative children, God, along with those brilliant minds, Lord God. We just bless them, Lord, to grow in the things of you, Lord, and to grow, God, Lord, knowing you so deeply, God, from an early age. Father, for my sister, I thank you for her faithfulness, God. I thank you, Lord, that she's a friend of God. She's a friend of Holy Spirit. She's a prayer warrior that she loves well and she loves deeply, loves so deeply that sometimes it hurts because you love so deeply. But God loves your love and he loves your heart and he loves your faithfulness. So Father, we just bless her, God. I thank you, Lord, that you tell her the secrets of your heart, God. You tell her, and just like Mary pondered these things in her heart, she couldn't tell everyone everything. You know, when when Jesus was being birthed in her womb, she couldn't tell everyone. She pondered, treasured these things in her heart. But like there's things that God will show you that it's like you can't even tell anyone because they're, they're too deep to even reveal. But you so faithfully hold them and pray. And it's literally like God's given you the heart of God in your hand. And so, Lord, we just thank you, God, for her, Lord, that you continue to just open her eyes and her ears to see and to hear, God. Lord, to hold the things even in the world, God, in her heart, Lord, that are on your heart, God, to pray and to see things change, Lord. So we just bless this home in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys so much. Thank you, Lord. For my, for my brother right here, God bless you, sir. I just, I just see the faithfulness. I see your faithfulness, that you're a man of faithfulness to the word. Hi. <laughs> I see that you're a man of faithfulness to the word, that you're one who's strong in the word of God. And you love both of you. I feel like you're a woman of prayer, deep prayer. The Lord loves your heart to pray. You, you pray. You pray so earnestly uh, for the things that, you know, uh, for family and for close ones, for relatives and for neighbors. You pray so deeply. And God wants you to know that he sees and he hears your prayers. And he knows your prayers. And your, he loves your prayer life. And he loves your faithfulness to him. That you, both of you, you stand so firmly that through many, many years, you've stood so firmly in the Lord and grounded in the word. God loves your faithfulness and he loves um, your foundations in the word of God. And I just see you, um, I just see you like writing notes for what, you know, what God's shown you and uh, what he's revealed in the word. And I see, I see even like this, this teaching kind of gifting upon you that, um, that whether you teach the word or not, uh, I don't know, but, but I see people coming around you and you literally, it's like you have such a great, such a deep understanding, a well of wisdom from the word of God that it's like when people come around you, you just kind of spill out revelation and knowledge. And, and God's put that in you. He's put this well of insight and this well of wisdom inside you. And I feel like you're even like a storyteller, like how Jesus told stories and he revealed truth out of stories. I feel like there's, there's stories and things that you've even been through and, and things like, I feel like there's this almost this, um, there's, there's such a strength in you and such a faith and courage in you. But at the same time, there's this other side of you that loves to have fun, that loves, um, you know, uh, pleasure and laughs. And I just see you with both sides of that, just bringing, um, bringing the stories into, uh, the gospels or bring the stories into the word and literally sharing stories with people, real life stories that then tie into stories from the word, like, uh, like parables, you know, and I see you bringing understanding, um, both to children as well as to, uh, you know, to men and women and, um, and just bringing understanding to them. And God's going to even open your ears even more, um, the ability to hear, uh, and the ability to know and the ability to, to hear his voice even more. Um, and so can I pray for you? Yes, God, I just thank you. I thank you for this beautiful couple, Father. I thank you, Lord God, for their faithfulness, God. I thank you for their courage. God says you have, both of you have so much courage that you have endured a lot. And God's given you so much courage and your courage and your longevity is inspirational and motivational to people around you. So Father, I bless God, their courage, God. I bless their faithfulness. And I feel like even on you, ma'am, that there's, there's, um, a, 
an anointing, a gifting that God's put on your hands to do work with your hands and to make things with your hands, whether it be food or, you know, sewing or whatever. I don't know, but, but I see God, um, giving you, um, giving you tools in your hands. And it's like, whatever you put your hands to, God will bless. And I, I feel like there is this thing in the kitchen where, where, um, where God would use you because I feel like there's a generosity about you that, um, you, you cook and you make for other people. And, um, the Lord loves that, that generosity that you carry and that you live in and walk in. And Father, I just thank you, God. Lord, would you just release more of your glory over this household, more of your glory, God, over my sister and over my brother, Father. I thank you, God, for their courage. I thank you for their faith and their faithfulness, God. Lord, I thank you, God. This is a man of the word, Lord. God, he's deeply ingrained in the word. And Father, I thank you, God. I see literally like the parable of the, it's funny, I keep getting this thing about parables, but I see the parable of the, you know, the seed, the sower. And and I see like the seed having been sown the, on good soil. It's the word, you know, on good soil. But I see in this season, it's literally growing up into a tree of life, into a tree full of fruit that bears um, leaves for healing. The Bible talks about leaves for healing, uh, you know, in every season. And I just see you as one having leaves for healing in every season, bearing good fruit, you know, all the fruit of the spirit love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I see you bearing that in every season and it being an inspiration. You're like a strong tower and a, and a solid, righteous oak tree planted by the water that literally the leaves and the tree do not, do not fade or do not wither. And you're just faithful to the end. But I see in this season that seed is going to produce a good, a good harvest. And some of the people that you've been believing for, for God to touch, um, you're going to begin to see your prayers answered and you're going to begin to see uh, fruit come in this season of those that you've been believing the Lord for and those that you've even been witnessing um, the goodness of God to. And so, Father, we just bless this family. Lord, we bless this couple. I also see the Lord doing something with, uh, is, it, is it your back that needs, do you need your knee? And you're back too, because I saw the Lord just realigning from the top of, from your neck down your back. So Father, I just thank you for healing coming right now in my sister. Lord, I thank you, God, that all the pain would just go in Jesus' name. God, we speak in alignment, Lord, first in her back, that all the pain, we just command every trace of affliction and infirmity to just loose right now. And Lord, we just release the healing virtue of Jesus right now in Jesus' name. God, into her knee. We just thank you, God, that you totally heal this knee. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. We take authority over every trace of damage, uh, any uh, issues with the cartilage or grinding. We just command to be healed and recreated right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for your healing virtue, God. I thank you for this woman of faith, God. Lord, I thank you, God, for your healing power just flowing through her body right now, God. We just release that healing right now in Jesus' name. Are you willing to take a walk with me and see how you're feeling? God, we just thank you, Lord, that all the pain would just go. Here, you can grab my, how are you feeling? Just command all that pain to just go right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. How's your back doing? It's better. It's better? Yes, it's what, better. What's happening? I don't know. It's, uh, I feel it's fine now. It's fine now? Yeah. Your knee and your yeah. back? Yes. Yes? How long did you have this pain? Um, I think it's, uh, my back is a couple, um, five years. Five years? Yeah, but uh, my knee is only um, three months. Three months. And did, were you, like, in need of a knee replacement or anything, just hurting? Am I on um, yesterday? Is, um, they tear inside between the um, knees. So I need to see the surgeon next week. But how is it feeling now? Can you bend it? You feel fine? No more pain? No. Come yeah. on. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. God is good. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you.
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. He's good. Amen. Come on. Man, I, I want, I, I, what's the time limit? <laughs> I don't know where Darren went. <laughs> I just, I'll re- be really quick and then we're going to preach. But for you, I just see, I see your faith. You're a woman of solid faith. You're a woman of passion and of faith. And God loves your passion. And I just see you going at the top of your lungs, just, just praying, interceding, as well as singing. And I just see you, I just see you just giving your everything for God. L- he loves your passion and you're an inspiration to those around you. You're an inspiration to those around you. And I see you lighting fires in people just through, just, just through your faith, just through your passion. I see you have such, um, such a depth of relationship with God, such an intimacy, such a friendship. As I, I feel like that you have such an ability, a clear ability to hear his voice. And, and you've always had this sense of discernment in you, even since you were a little girl where you would kind of just sense things or know things. And, um, but I'm telling you that, that God will shift things through, uh, what he reveals to you and he'll shift things in the nations. And I believe that you have a real, a real passion and a call even to the nations. And some of what you would do would be from here, you know, through, through your intercession. But I also see you going and I see you taking gifts and, um, and giving to people in need. And I just see you, um, touching the nations, uh, and, and bringing passion. I feel like there's even, there's, <laughs> I feel like there's even a preach inside of you, sister. <laughs> I see you preaching the word with fire. <laughs> and sparking, I see you sparking a generation of women. Literally chains coming off of women that have held them and said, oh, you're just a woman. You can't do anything. You can't, you can't be in ministry. But I see you literally setting women on fire and showing them their real identity and who they are. And so, God, I just thank you for my sister. God, I thank you, Lord. God, for, um, Lord, her passion and her fire that's in her bones, God. It's like Jeremiah, I think it's 20, says about, um, if I, if I try and hold the word in, I cannot because it's like a fire shot up in my bones. I think it's Jeremiah 20, verse 9. But, but that's for you, sister, because it's literally like there's such a fire in your bones, you cannot contain it. You cannot keep it in. And I just see you breaking chains that would bind people and would keep them from their destiny. So, Father, we just thank you, God, Lord, that she carries that spirit of liberty and freedom. In Jesus' name, come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My brother just walked in from Canada. Woo! <laughs> Welcome, Brendan. Come on. God is good. woo <laughs> It's going to be the new thing, right? So good, whoever. <laughs> he, he's good. Amen. Awesome. Well, listen, like I said, we want to, um, I, I believe if you guys stick around, we want to lay hands on everybody uh, today, but I want to release this word. Um, before I do, Amanda, let me, she, one last thing. You guys, you guys still good? Okay, okay. She has a song that the Lord put on her heart. And so I, we're just going to give her a, a short little bit to sing this and declare this over you. Okay. <laughs> I actually woke up yesterday morning with, um, from the Little Mermaid, Part of Your World. And stuff. Like, I was just like going through my head. Um, so I was like just kind of praying about it because usually that's not in my head when I wake up. Um, so... <laughs> So I was just talking to God, and I think he wants to bring breakthrough and freedom from old mindsets um, and break off thoughts that um, he's not for you and that you're not worthy or good enough, and that he wants to give you new legs to stand firm in who he is. Um, So yeah, I was just given the scripture, Psalm 42, and it says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to sing this over you. I changed some of the lyrics. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to just close your eyes. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free, wish I could be part of that world what would i give if i could live out of these waters what would i pay to spend a day warm on the sand 
betcha on land they understand he doesn't reprimand his daughters men and women sick of swimming ready to stand and ready to know what the father knows ask him some questions and get some answers what's the fire and why does it burn when's it my turn wouldn't i love love to explore that shore up above out of the sea it's time to be part of that world <laughs> Come on, that's awesome. Do you receive that? Woo! <laughs> Come on, part of the supernatural God world. Amen? Awesome. Well, listen, I really believe today that God wants to release the multiplication factor. Come on. The Lord um, gave me this download um, the last time I was in London um, a few weeks ago, and I've only preached it one other time from there, but he'd been speaking to me about it yesterday for here, and I really believe that he wants to release that multiplication factor, and you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute as we unfold this word, and I'll try not to be too long so that we can lay hands on you guys and you're all good and happy, And but how many know revival? I mean, there's kind of no time limits. <laughs> All right. Are you guys good? We're good, Darren? Okay, 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 cool. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, in the midst of revival, when you carry the spirit of revival, there's something that naturally happens where there's an acceleration of harvest that happens, amen? And there's a multiplication factor that goes into effect, and not only in the midst of revival, but revival activates things, and it ignites things, and it sends things kind of running in a good way, right? And propels, launches right? And, and I really believe that in this season, God wants to release to you that spirit of multiplication, but really it's a double portion factor. And I want to read this to you. I'm going to jump around. I love the Bible and I love the spirit. I love the spirit and the word. We got to have both to be balanced. Amen. And so when I preach, I kind of go all over the place. So if you can follow, you can follow. If you listen, listen, but, <laughs> but I jump around. So Isaiah 60, the thing I love about the Bible is it all intermingles and you find the the same message throughout. It's like a puzzle, right? Oh, I love it. Or a quilt that just weaves together. But Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord's anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He's sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them an, a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the plant of the Lord that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They'll raise up the former devastations. They'll repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and pasture your flocks and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. Now this is what I want you to see, but I had to do that and read that to build up. <laughs> but you'll be called the priests of the Lord, verse six. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Verse 7, instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. Say double portion. Instead of your shame, you'll have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, you'll shout for joy over the portion. They, therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. This is the season of the double portion, you guys. God is releasing the multiplication factor, which in a sense is the double portion factor, anointing. And I'm telling you, this is what God wants to release even in this place this morning. It's the double portion anointing that comes out of the midst of revival and reformation. It comes out of the midst of revival to bring reformation, really. But God wants to anoint you with the double portion. And one of the ways that you walk in that is by walking in that Isaiah 61 or Luke 4 where Jesus reiterates it, where the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to bring good news. He's anointed you to bring good news. To replace 
you know, ashes with joy. Amen. He's, he's anointed you to rebuild the, the ruined cities and the ancient ruins, right? He's anointed you. He wants to release a double portion. And the number one way to do this is by walking in the anointing of the spirit of the Lord resting upon you. But there's a whole bunch of keys that come into effect with, with bringing that double portion. What is the double portion anointing? Well, you see with Elijah and Elisha, right? We're all, we got the Elisha revolution going because it's the double portion generation. But Elijah to Elisha in, in 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, right? You have the double portion mandate. As Elijah is about to be taken up into heaven, um, if I can get there, <laughs> Second Kings 2, you know the story though, he, El Elisha asks for one thing. When Elijah says to him, ask what I shall do for you before I'm taken from you. Now, first of all, what happens in verse 8 of Second Kings chapter 2, Elijah takes his mantle, folds it together, and strikes the waters at the Jordan, and they're divided here and there so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And when they crossed over, Elijah says to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I'm taken from you. And Elisha says, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he says, you've asked a hard thing. Elijah says, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken away from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. And as they're going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven and Elisha saw it and cried out my Father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. Now listen to what Elisha says, my father, my father. In the midst of the signs and wonders and visitation, he doesn't lose sight of his father. He doesn't lose sight of his mentor, of his father. And that's what gave him the ability or the grace to receive the double portion mantle, the double portion mandate. Right? See, in the midst of signs and wonders and miracles, and I'm all about that. I see it everywhere I go. Signs, wonders, healing, miracles. I'm all about it. I'm the craziest as they come, and I love it. <laughs> okay? But listen, we've got to keep our eyes focused on the Father. He is. The Father is the, the author and perfecter of our faith, and he's the one. He is the giver of every good and perfect gift right? With him, there is no turning, right? He, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from him, the father of lights. And so, so Elisha here, he does not lose sight of his father. There's a principle that comes when both our eyes are fixed on our heavenly father, first and foremost. And secondly, those that are in authority over us are those that are leaders that God's put in our life as leaders. Jeremy and I both, we have spiritual moms and we have spiritual dads and we submit things to them. We go to them for counsel, for wisdom, for, uh, you know, uh, agreement on things. And we encourage their, their wisdom and their counsel, even if it's a rebuke into our life. We need to have those kind of people in our life, people that we look up to, people that are fathers and mothers. So there's a twofold thing principle here uh, that we learn from Elijah and Elisha is number one, our focus is never, it should never come off of our heavenly father. See, in him, you have your identity. In him is where you understand and you begin to walk in your sonship, your, uh, your identity as sons and daughters of God right? When people don't really know who their father is, is when they don't know who they are, right? But when your eyes are in him, you begin to, he begins to reveal to you how he sees you as a child of God. That's how you begin to walk in your God-given authority and destiny as a child of God and a co-heir with Christ. And so, number one, our eyes have got to remain on our Father. Number two, you know, we need to, we need to receive both encouragement as well as correction from our earthly leaders, fathers and mothers. Amen? And that's, that's healthy relationship and that's healthy church. Amen? But from this 
Christ because he doesn't lose sight of his father. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. And then he takes hold of his own clothes, tears them in two pieces. There was an act of, uh, of honor there. Uh, he also took up the mantle of Elijah, Elijah that fell from him and returned and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Now, I, I want you to see something here. He returns the very place where just before this whole incident happens, Elijah goes and parts the river Jordan, right? It parts this way and that way in verse 8, so that the two of them could cross on dry ground. Now, the very first thing that Elisha does with the mantle that he receives out of heaven is he goes back to that place. He returns and stands by the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle, verse 14, of Elijah that fell from him and struck the waters and said, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he also struck the waters, they were divided here and there, and Elisha crossed over them. There's something that happens when you have a testimony, when you've seen, when you've been an eyewitness. You know, the Gospels talk about we are eyewitnesses. Luke talks about eyewitnesses. Acts talk about we were eyewitnesses of Jesus. When you're an eyewitness of an encounter, of a testimony, of a miracle, of a sign and a wonder, of a harvest that comes forth, when you're an eyewitness or you even just heard the testimony, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. When you have the testimony, there's something that happens that, it, that launches you into the ability to see it again and again and again and even multiply. And Elisha here, he goes back, but he puts that mantle into effect immediately. See, sometimes people receive in a setting like this, whether it be in revival, camp meetings, or conference, people receive impartation after impartation after, and we're going to do impartation this morning, or afternoon, I guess now, but, but, you know, I'm all about impartation. Sign me up for every, every God impartation I can get, you know? But sometimes people receive impartations and then it just becomes books on a shelf that, that collect dust and don't, don't do anything with it. Never get read or whatever, you know? But there's something that happens when you receive an impartation and you put it into effect. You put it through faith into effect. You begin to use it. You begin to try it out. You begin to test it out. If you're receiving an impartation for healing miracles then do something with it. Go pray for the sick. Go find someone, whether it be a family member at first or a neighbor or a coworker at first that needs a miracle. Just begin to, to ask and to find opportunities to pray for the sick, right? Elisha puts this, this mantle into effect immediately. He goes back to the very place where he last saw a radical miracle, sign and wonder, take place from his fa spiritual father, Elijah, and tests it out right there. And as a result, because I, I believe he did that because he had, number one, just seen that happen. And number two, because it was a fresh, it was the exact testimony, he could have faith to see it again because he's seen it once, that exact same miracle. There's something that happens when you've seen cancer healed once, you know, you have faith for it again. I've seen this over and over and over and over and over again in my life, you guys, where, where I've, you know, had a word of knowledge for somebody, for something, or it could even be not in the case of a word of knowledge, but I'll use a word of knowledge as an example. Say I had a word of knowledge for someone with, you know, a cyst in the breast. Pray for that person. Boom. They're instantly healed. They come back with the report. No cyst, no growth, no tumor. I now have faith to see it again and again and again. And for me personally, I see cysts and tumors and growths dissolve all over the world everywhere I go because it's something that I have so much faith for because I've seen it so many times. There's something that happens when, when you've seen something once that you naturally get faith to see the same thing again. And that's what happens with Elisha is he sees the river part once. So he's like, okay, I got the mantle. Let's see if it's going to work. Let's see if this is actually going to happen now. I really do have the double portion, God, or do I not? You know, goes to the very waters, the very place where he saw the sign and the wonder happen. Boom, sure enough. And that launches his ministry of the double portion mandate that that was on Elisha versus on Elijah he saw double the miracles double the signs and wonders see but first he honored he didn't lose sight he served right 
There's something that happens in humility and in servanthood that brings promotion and duplication and multiplication. And God's looking, he's raising up a generation who would multiply the glory of God, who would multiply the miraculous, who would multiply the kingdom, who would multiply harvest. Because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. How many know Jesus said in John 14, 12, that these things you'll do and greater because I go to the Father. Why greater? Because there's so much more. Because he did his job on the earth of multiplying himself. He had the three, he had the 12, he had the 70. He he multiplied himself. And as a result, it spread and it spread and it spread and it spread and it spread more. And there's something about the greater works of Jesus that happens when there's a whole company of believers going out and doing the stuff, doing the signs and wonders, seeing the miracles, winning the lost. See, but so many of us don't necessarily, so much of the church doesn't necessarily believe it because we're like, oh, well, that's Jesus. Yeah, but have you read Philippians 2? Jesus didn't even consider his place as God something, you know, to be grasped. Like he did not even come on the earth modeling his godness, his his deity. He came on the earth modeling his humanity in order to lay set an example for you and I. And his number one uh, way of walking in that, as it says in Philippians 2, is he, he was obedient to the point of death and death on the cross. He laid down his own life. He humbled himself and became obedient, obedient even to, the, uh, to death on the cross, right? There's something about obedience and humility that brings forth the manifestation of the glory of God. And if we walk with Jesus and we walk knowing the Father and like Isaiah 61 I read, the Spirit of the Lord resting upon you, you naturally begin to unfold the double portion and the multiplication factor into your life. You see, all through the Word, all through the Gospels, but even from the Old Testament, how how when one... One little person sees multiplication and one miracle multiplies into another. Uh, Remember in uh, in the account in Mark, Mark chapter 6 of the feeding of the 5,000, you have that, but then in Mark 8, there's another feeding of the 4,000. And then in the midst of that, there's walking on water and there's the, you know, uh, the healing of the sick and the demons being cast out and all this stuff. And there's something that happens. Why, why could they do it again? Why could they see the bread and the fish multiplied again? They saw it once. Jesus was giving them prince. In fact, he was so frustrated with them that he actually said when the disciples were like, oh, we forgot to bring bread. Jesus was like, have you already forgotten about the signs that I just did through you? That I already showed you? That it's not about, you know, when he's talking about the leaven of the Pharisees and they're like, oh, no, we didn't bring bread. You know? <laughs> but Jesus was like, oh, what are you going to learn? Once you've seen it once, you'll see it again. Once you've seen the multiplication factor in effect, you'll see it again. See, God wants to release multiplication in your life in every area. In the area of souls and harvest. In the area of finances and provision. In the area of miracles and healings and signs and wonders. In the unusual. In nations. But there's, there's, there's things that come into play. There's things on our part that help to bring that into effect. Again, like I said, humility, identity, knowing the Father, being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit resting upon us. Amen? Humility and servanthood, like Elisha modeled and like Jesus modeled. And then, and then paying the price of whatever the sacrifice I was talking about last night looks like, you know, it's, it's, you know, God, let me say it like this. God wants us to, okay, in the church, we often, in the charismatic church, we're like the bless me club, right? And, and God in the kingdom, God's all about blessings. Amen. He's all about the provision. And in a sense, I'm kind of preaching that this morning, but listen, there is a price to pay in the kingdom. There is that living sacrifice.
sacrifice, laying down our own rights so that we get the better. I, I've lived this even since I was a teenager, you guys, and I've seen how, let me, let me read this to you first of all. Like I said, I, I love scripture, and I'll go to a whole lot of it, so don't mind me, but love the word and the spirit, because they're both good. <laughs> In Genesis 22, you have Abram, well, Abraham, and he you know, has his promise. So he's already promised Genesis 12. He's already given the promise that he's going to be the father of a multitude. And, you know, he's given this promise in his old age. And yet then his promise comes along. Isaac comes along, right? And now there's only one thing is that promise. God says, okay, now Abraham, I want you to take your son of promise. I want you to go up the mountain and I want you to sacrifice him. Whoo! In his old age, he has a son of promise. He's like, hallelujah. You know, he's like, he's like, I got my promise. This is awesome. God's word fulfilled. And now God's like, kill it. What? <laughs> Listen, God is always out to check our hearts. What do we value more? The promise or the promise giver? Right? What do we value more? The, the, the prophetic word or the giver of that word who makes it come to pass anyway? Right? And so, so Abraham goes up the mountain. He's ready to sacrifice his son. I don't need to go in detail because you know the story. And as he's literally ready, his son on the altar, a ram comes out of the thicket. The angel of the Lord appears and says, don't do that. Just wait. You know, here, it's your provision. There's a ram. <laughs> but, you know, but his heart was submitted and honoring to the Lord. He was willing to be 100% obedient, pay the price. Whatever God was asking because his, his, his heart was for God. Above all else. Above the promise, it was for the promise giver. His, his passion was all about the covenant. Like we were talking about last night. And as a result, I want you to see this because in Genesis 22, uh, verse 16, God visits him and, and says in this same encounter, and says, says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, indeed I will greatly bless you. Now he already told Abraham that, but listen to this. And I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. There's, God is now promising multiplication, number one of his seed, but number two, that in his, in his descendants, the entire, the nations of the earth will be blessed. There's, there's a multiplication thing in effect right there. And it all came because you obeyed my voice. And you did not with, withhold this anything from me. See, when you're willing to lay your own life down on the altar and do whatever it takes, God will give you so much greater and he'll multiply harvest in your life. And not only in your own life, but we're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. And so God will begin to bless the nations of the earth through what you carry and through what you manifest on the earth. If you, well, before I get ahead of myself, so when I was 17 years old, the Lord, I was, I was in grade 12, 12th grade, and the Lord asked me, I was a show jumper, equestrian horse riding show jumper, and my dream was to ride in the Olympics one day, that's what I was going, I love the Lord, uh, you know, but, and my mission field at that time, in my opinion, was the equestrian world, because since I was a little girl, God called me to missions, and so I just thought in high school, well, here's my mission field, which is awesome if that's what God's calling you to, but when I was 17, God said, I want you to lay this down because I have a better dream for your life and I want you to lay down horses. Now, you got to understand, I rode every single day uh, after, after school hours. That's where I was. I was at the stables, riding, training, uh, competing in the summer, uh, training other people's horses as well. And it was my life, you know. And so God tells me, 17 years old, I want you to give this up completely. Listen, when God gives you the word, he gives you the grace to do it. That's why Abraham could do what he was about to do. 
When God gives you the word, he gives you the grace because he never gives you more than you can handle, right? Than grace covers. And so, uh, so most people would think, well, that was your life, Miranda. How was that difficult? Not really because I had the grace to do it. So I said, absolutely, God, I want your vision for my life. I, from that point in time, I stepped into missions and ministry. And before I was 20 years old, I was in 20 nations. I began to see, uh, ra- I began to see radical authority and miracles take place. Things I'd never seen growing up or even knew existed. Speaking to the rains and seeing them move, uh, weather patterns change, seeing radical miracle signs and wonders from an early age, in a sense, before I was 20 years old, seeing these things happen. And God began to multiply. I began to see uh, money multiply. I began to see provision out of just nowhere come forth. I began to see so many signs and wonders and supernatural provisions in my life as a teenager still, all because I was willing to lay down my vision for my life in order to get God's greater. And I couldn't, I couldn't even have dreamed of what I'm doing now and what I'm seeing now with what God is, is doing with us in the nations and in the world or, you know, and, and what I'm seeing manifest. There's a multiplication factor. And I I know it because I've seen it in my own life where God's blessings are far, they far outweigh any price you ever have to pay. But he looks for the heart. And so when you're willing to give up whatever he's asking of you, if he's asking, because some people, well, he'll always, he'll always check our hearts. But you know, like something like, for example, the horses, like that's not a bad vision. It just wasn't what God had for me. You know, some of you are called to sports or entertainment. Like, you know, I'm in the modeling industry and, and uh, for some people that's a little bit crazy and to be a preacher and a model is weird, but God called me into it. (laughs) You know, he called me into it to be light in dark places. But listen, for some of you, you're called to be athletes or you're called to be artists or whatever. And, and it just, horses was my dream and it was a good dream. And, you know, there needs to be uh, believers, faith filled, signs and wonders, you know, revival believers in that industry. There needs to be. But it just wasn't what God had for me. And because I was willing to lay that down, God multiplied blessings in my life where he took me around the world. So many nations before I even turned 20, literally living by faith, God providing for me radically in radical supernatural ways. And it hasn't stopped to this day, you guys. The blessings that I've seen, seeing, seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of people come to know Jesus, get saved, being filled with the Holy Spirit, coming out of, off their deathbeds, being raised to life, coming out of comas, coming out of hospital, stage four cancer is healed. I mean, the blessings far outweigh the cost, far surpass. But you see, there's something that happens that when we're willing to say yes to God and yield to him, God will multiply blessing in your life. And like I said before, you know, well, with Abraham, you know, he was, his, his, his blessing was not just for him, but it literally would touch the nations of the earth. See, God wants to bless you so that it would literally, you would bless the nations of the earth. Why does he want to bless your finances? Why do we take offerings? Not for us. God is our, always our provider, amen? But we, we take offerings because it's biblical and because it's a principle that when you sow, you reap. God wants to multiply. He wants to multiply your blessings so you can be a blessing to the nations around you. Since I was 17 years old, God would, would ask me to give large sums of money. At 17 years old, a 17-year-old girl doesn't have that much. But I went straight into missions because God told me to. And when I was on um, a solid year and a half long or year and a quarter long uh, trip without coming home, God said, I want you to drain your bank account and I want you to give this money to this missionary. And I said, God, I know, like I'm only a couple months in right now and I know I've got a whole other year to, to go to live by faith. And God was telling me, I don't want you to write support letters. I don't want you to get money from your parents or anyone around you. I want you to trust, trust me. And so it was the journey that I was on. And so I literally drained my account and gave all the money to another girl that was going on missions. And and I said, all right, God, I got nothing, but I got you. I'm telling you, I began to see, I began to see money come out of nowhere. Nobody knew my needs. I would find money uh, like on my bed, on my pillow at night. And I don't know how it got there. I would literally.
literally go into ticket offices for my flight ticket, uh, knowing that God was sending me to another nation across the globe, Middle East or wherever, and, um, and not having the money. Three days prior to flying out, I'm like, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I know that I got to go get my ticket now or I'm not going get to get it. I'd go in and the flight uh, or the, the person would tell me, this is the lowest price and I've gotten you the lowest fare. I'm like, I'm a, I, I don't have it. And they're like, and I'm a thousand dollars short at some points in time. And they're like, they're like, okay, well, this is the smallest. Oh, just wait a second. Something just came up. Oh, it's actually a thousand dollars less. And I get the ticket for the exact amount that I have. And it happened, oh, amen. It happened over and over and over and over and over again. And not only that, but there will be the little things, like the very little things, like me thinking I need a new journal or I want this worship album. And it was just a thought. But how many know that when you're obedient to the Lord, God will multiply and he'll also bless even the little things. People will come up to me and be like, I don't know why, but God just told me to give this to you, and that journal, or that, that worship album, or whatever. And there's something that happens. I, so I learned it as a teenager, and it never stopped. Listen, sometimes we get familiar, and we're not taking another offering, so I can talk about money right now. But, but listen, listen, there's something that happens when we get stuck in a rut so often, but when we get stuck in a rut, there's no, there's no grace for the multiplication. When, when, see, God's all about faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, right? It says in Hebrews eleven six. And so without faith, it's impossible to please him. But with faith, when you step in and you do the unknown and you step into the unknown, God far multiplies way beyond you can ask or imagine. So 17, year old, 17 years old, 18 years old, single girl, traveling the nations. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but God, I just trust you. Boom, he multiplies, multiplies, multiplies. And it didn't stop. And God will continue to increase my faith and increase what he's asking of me. Miranda, now I want you to give this amount. Now I want you to give this an amount. Even this last year and a half in revival, God would speak to me large sums of money that Jeremy and I don't necessarily have, but we're like, I'm like, I tell Jeremy, I'm like, I feel like God's asking me to give this much to this person right now or this ministry or this this cause right now and he's like praise about it yep it's gonna require faith but we're gonna do it and as a result the largest seeds we've ever given but see this is life you guys because I know that it's just gonna increase it's gonna increase and God's gonna be like okay now I want you to give this much and I want you to give it and it's gonna always increase because if it's not increasing our faith if it's not if it's not stretching us it's not growing our faith but you see, when it's growing our faith, when it's stretching our faith, that multiplication factor comes into effect because God will far exceedingly outweigh what you can give. But if we're stuck at giving $10, and now if you just have $10, that's fine. But if we're stuck in just every, every time there's an opportunity to give, I'm just going to do this because I know it, and I'm just going to give $10 because that's just, you know, the nice thing to do, then where's the faith behind that? If God is telling you to give, ask him how much he wants you to give. Or if it's in the sense of a gift, because we've seen it many times with gifts, where I've had nice things given to me, and then God suddenly is like, is like I want you to give this over to this person. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, absolutely. And as a result, God gives me the upgrade. <laughs> See, the upgrade, the upgrade is the multiplication factor, you guys. When you give, you receive more. When you give, you, got, you cannot outgive God. <laughs> In every aspect of your life, you guys, whether it be in serving, listen, you serve radically, you, you feed the homeless radically, you open your home to people because that's what you love to do, to serve people, to, to make meals for people. You do that radically and God will, God will meet all of your needs way above and beyond. And you'll discover that suddenly now people are offering, I don't know, maybe they're giving you gift cards to your favorite restaurant or something, you know? Like, you just find that you cannot outgive God. God. God is up to releasing multiplication. In the midst of revival, you guys, there is something that happens with multiplication. Do you know when Pentecost came, Acts chapter 2, Pentecost comes, revival hits. Right? Holy Spirit comes, boom, they're set ablaze. Whoa, yeah, let's preach the gospel. Peter goes preaching the gospel where they're all at. 3,000 get saved. We talked about it last night. I'm sure you guys probably talked about it all week. But 3,000 get saved. Now something happens. Now they've got faith for the harvest. Woo, we got faith for the signs and wonders. Now Acts chapter 3 comes along, and boom, now 
they're taking it out. Now they're, they're taking it from the upper room to now they're taking it to the streets. Now this man who was lame for 40 years, 40 years lame, sitting at the gate called Beautiful, sitting there, everyone's passing by. Jesus probably passed him by. And yet here now Peter and John come by. They get fed up. They're like, ah, silver and gold, we got none. But what we got, we give to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Get up and walk. Boom. He gets up, starts leaping, dancing, praising God. And now what happens? Multiplication factor, 5,000. Get saved. Get added. 5,000. They go from 3,000. Now there's 5,000 added because of the man at the gate called Beautiful. In revival, multiplication, multiplication. Then you have, so in Acts chapter, uh, in Acts chapter two and three, they're giving generously because in the midst of revival, there's generosity. But then what happens in Acts chapter four? Boom. It says there's not any lack amongst them. There was so much generosity. Now, in the midst of revival, they're giving to everyone who had need. They're sharing all their things. So Acts chapter, Acts chapter 2, verse 45, they begin, uh, well, 44, all those who believe were together, had all things in common. They began selling their properties and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. But then Acts chapter 4 comes along. And now suddenly they're with one heart and soul. Verse 32, not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was upon them all. And there was not a needy person among them, not a needy person. So now, woo! Now they're not only sharing possessions, now there's no lack. There's no need amongst them because multiplication, first multiplication in the harvest, then multiplication in the provisions and the possessions and the, and the land and the houses because they understood a principle. Not only that, but extraordinary signs and wonders are breaking out amongst them. With great power, verse 33 of Acts 4, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was upon them all. Radical miracles began taking off. And there's a multiplication of the miracles, signs, and wonders. Then it goes so much that later on in Acts, you know, Paul's handkerchief is healing people. And earlier than that, Acts 5.15, Peter's shadow is healing people. See, there's something that happens when you, when you tap into a realm of revival, when you tap into a realm of grace, you begin to expand your umbrella of grace, your, uh, your uh, radius of grace, and you begin to push it further and further and further until multiplication begins to take place. And we see this over and over. I remember one time when we were in Peru, and we go to this one city, and we begin, we begin to preach the gospel. And because that's what we do in Peru, we preach the gospel, see many, 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 many people saved. So we go to this one city, and the crusade platform set up. Well, one problem. There was a religious church right there uh, in that square, that main city plaza where we're doing the crusade, and they wanted nothing to do with Holy Spirit and Jesus. <laughs> and so the religious, religious church, and governing that city. And so, boom, suddenly the power goes out. We got no mic, no amplifiers, microphones, nothing, no sound. So we have to get our, our, uh, our Peruvian, um, ex, like mob boss who got saved, radical evangelist now, radical, the most joy filled believer you'll ever meet wins tons and tons of the Lord. But he has a booming voice, so we had to get him to preach because we didn't have, we didn't have microphones or sound. So anyway, we had a small harvest, but, but then we come back uh, a year, well, maybe a year or two later, I think a year later, but this is amazing because the day after, oh, this is funny, you guys, the day after, the day after that, that we left that city, an earthquake hits. That's not funny, but listen to what happens. So, so an earthquake hits. Now, there was absolutely no damage except that religious church split in half. <laughs> and, 
I'm telling you, God was not happy with, uh, with their, uh, their control in that city. So the whole city hears about it. The whole city finds out about it. They're like, whoa, we got to fear the Lord. So we come back, you know, a year or two later, whenever it was, come back to the same city. And you guys, it was amazing. We had such, like the whole city came out. We had the craziest, some of the craziest miracles we've ever had out there. Massive, massive harvest because their ears were open since we had planted the seed, you know, a year or two before and had, you know, a small effect. But now, boom, the whole city comes out. The multiplication factor, in effect, because of our obedience to step out and to go for it and not to let the door be closed. See, we go in again and boom, massive harvest, the lame, the paralyzed being healed, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, all the works, you know. But so many signs and wonders that were just so easy. And over and over and over again, we see this in effect. And you see it again through the Gospels. This is what happens. Jesus, he multiplies the bread and the fish, like I said earlier. So John 6, that account, he, he brings, he's like, okay, do you have anything, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, there's a little boy. He's got five loaves, two fish, and, you know, but it's lunch, his, his family's lunch. And, well, bring it, bring it over. So the little boy, he gives his everything for that day, you know? He gives his meal, possibly for that week, who knows? But he gives his, his whole, his, the, all, all that he had right there, gives it in faith. See, God can do wonders when you give in faith, when you step out in faith and obedience, and you just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, amen? Because that's what he had to do. So he gives to he gives the disciples to Jesus, and Jesus blesses. He blesses, and he breaks, and then he, he says, okay, now give it out, and he begins to give it out, and the disciples begin to give it out, and the different accounts of this, of this story in the Gospels, the disciples give it out, and boom, it starts multiplying, and it says 5,000 men. We don't know about women and children. There could have easily been 15,000 people there. Who knows, right? Twelve baskets left over. 12 baskets left over. And I love it because that you have you have the disciples like their jaws dropped, right? <laughs> but but that's only one account. Like I said in Mark 6 and 8, you have both stories of the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the uh, 4,000. And and they're still like needing to learn their lesson, but once you've seen it once, you guys God wants to put a faith in you that you would see it again and again and again. Another time we were in Peru, we were, this was probably one of the first times I was there, and we were doing a, a feeding in a village, and we we're going to preach the gospel to them, so we prepare all the food, we bring it. Well, trouble was, more people than we expected, which usually happens, show up, right? And so we're seeing the bins of food go down and down and down. We're like, uh-oh. We're looking at the people. We're like, this isn't going to feed everyone. We begin praying over it and declaring the multiplication. And so even with 30 to 50 more people in line, it looked like there was nothing left. We begin, we're like, all right, God, multiply, multiply, multiply. Every person got not only their fill, but more than enough. Some people got more than one plate. Come on. We begin to preach the gospel. Souls get saved. And it was amazing. But how many know that gave us the faith to see it again and again and again? We went to a fisherman village um, a few years ago. And this was after that, that time that I just told you about. And we go to this fisherman village where they tell us nobody's ever come in to preach the gospel here. These people have never heard the gospel. It's dark. There's a lot of bad stuff that goes on here. But uh, we're going to set up camp. <laughs> and we're going to do a feeding there because Jeremy I love doing the feedings, and since, you know, you, you meet their physical needs, then you can meet their spiritual needs, right? And so we go, and we do this feeding, and we had about 100 meals for this particular uh, village. There are more people than that, but that's all that we were going to, you know, feed was 100 people. Well, trouble was, you know, word gets out, 250 people show up, and we're like, oh, Lord, all right, do it again, God, multiply. We've seen it before. We're going to see it again. Multiply. We know it's in your word. Multiply. And boom, more than enough meals were served, preach the gospel, miracle signs and wonders, and harvest. Once it happens once, it's easy to tap into it again. I remember the first time, so like I said earlier, I've seen tons of tumors and cysts disappear. Well, the first time God told me to give an altar call for tumors, I was like, whoa, really God, okay, like uh, this is an interesting one, but okay, so I was in Germany. 
And the Lord tells me, I want you to give an altar call for tumors. Someone actually confirms, they said, who came with us. She said, wow, that's crazy because I actually had a vision um, and a word on the airplane coming over here that there was supposed to be an altar call given for tumors. But I didn't hear this till after. So I'm like, all right, we're going to give an altar call. 20 people come up. Boom, 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 boom. We pray. I'm telling you, like, every single person was healed. Some of them stage 4 cancer. They came back, one woman, stage 4 cancer, totally healed of cancer. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. And she received a, a, a teeth miracle as well. She received a gold tooth in her mouth where she needed major, like, reconstruction of her teeth. God recreated it. Amen. And uh, just a radical testimony that they were still telling me about several years later. And so now I've seen it once. I've seen it in a corporate setting, an altar call once. Now I'm going to see it again. So I'm in Argentina uh, a couple of years after that. And uh, God tells me again, I want you to give an altar call for cysts and tumors. Whole bunch of people come up. Boom, 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 boom. Radical. I mean, I couldn't even get away from the testimonies. I was leaving the grounds, and people were running up to the car saying, oh, my gosh, I had this, this growth on my knee, and it's completely gone, and, and so many miracles, you guys. But see, amen, I had, amen, I had the faith, Jesus, I had the faith built into me because I'd seen it before. We're in Myanmar a couple of years ago, and, uh, you know, Un, untouched land, right? So we're shocked because this place gets filled up with people. Well, we, uh, we saw over 30 doctor verified cancers healed there. And come on, there's, they were still for like a year after sending us the extra, the reports, the scans that showed the before and the after. And people were coming to the meetings from the day before and saying, this was me before yesterday and this is me now. I just came back with the test. Look, no more cancer. And radical, radical miracles. But once you've seen it once, it begins to happen over and over. It's easy to see it over and over and over again. God wants to release this multiplication factor in you where you begin to see everything in your life multiply. So like I was talking about the uh, stepping out in faith with, with finances and with giving. I love to give. I absolutely love it. But, you know, it's a faith test, right? And so when God says, I'm like, absolutely, I'm all in. And then I'm like, all right, God, you know, we need the provision now. And, but every single time he is way more than faithful. I remember before revival broke out, you know, four, well, no, more than that, years before in San Diego, we're sowing, we're sowing, we're sowing, we're plowing in the ground, $100,000 in debt because we never made our budget ever. And, but we just knew God was saying, do it. You're, you're sowing seed into the ground in this city. You're investing in this city for the purpose of revival. This was years before the fire of glory outpouring broke out. We're just being faithful, but we're like, God, we need a miracle because like, this is not good on our credit. This is not good on our ministry like this is not good we need a breakthrough but we believe you and we believe your word and we thank you for the breakthrough and so and so you know boom suddenly we're faithful with the little we're faithful uh to sow and to plant and and boom suddenly revival breaks out and god starts multiplying because in the midst of revival acts two and four in the midst of revival there's never any lack he still stretches our faith all the time. Believe me, all the time. There's, there's things that we've, that we've not done or we've given up because we're like, oh, we just need to be able to pay our staff, you know? Like, I'm telling you, we're still living by faith. But there's something that happens in the midst of revival where multiplication comes in every area of your life. So not only did God pay off, uh, pay off our debt in the first month and a half of revival, all of it, $100,000 in debt, he erased it, deleted it. We're seeing people, amen, we're seeing people have their loans suddenly uh, deleted or erased. They're having their debts suddenly erased and canceled. They're having, they're having provisions and promotions come in their workplaces that they didn't even know if they were going to hang on to their job. I mean, so many things in the midst of revival, multiplication comes forth naturally. Now it's not a matter of just trying to make it. Now God's providing the millions to bring to the nations. He's providing the millions to, to release revival in the nations of the earth. To feed the homeless. To give into, into situations. We're building orphan homes in a whole village in Uganda, Africa. And that's just one of the projects that we're doing. And we're able to, because it's not, it's, it's, our, 
it's one of our associate ministries and we're literally funding the majority of it for her because we believe in it and we believe in what you know in the rescue of the children the rescue of these abused women and all that that literally God is providing more than enough so we're able to back projects like this and see see multiplication take place so many can get saved and in the natural get rescued get healed get free from trauma free from abuse come on in the midst of revival see this is why we need revival anyone that says you guys know it but anyone that says there's a lot of people in the church that say why do you need revival oh we got a culture of revival listen there's miracle signs and wonders that's just a part of ordinary christian life doesn't make you in revival if you're seeing miracles (laughs) But in the midst of revival, there's a move of the Spirit that brings the blessing, like Abraham, where literally his seed would multiply and bless the nations of the earth. This is what God does in revival. When he touches you with the spirit of revival and you walk out radically in humility and servant-heartedness and looking at your father and being anointed with the spirit of the Lord and humbling yourself and serving others and giving when God asks you to give and being radical in your faith and stepping out and praying for those that you never prayed for before or for those miracles that you never believed for before. But now you've seen it from other people or you've heard about in the testimony now you're like I'm gonna do it boom 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 multiplication happens the blessing of the Lord will overtake you I'm telling you it's a Deuteronomy 28 season the beginning where the blessing of the Lord will overtake you where you literally and it says it says in Deuteronomy 28 that if you obey all my commands if you walk with him in intimacy if you obey what he's asking of you you do what he's asking of you then God will multiply he will bless you he won't let any of the sickness of of the enemy come on you He won't let any of the, you know, the negativity or the curses touch you, right? Like we talked about last night. But there's something that happens that God wants to bring multiplication, like we're seeing with revival, right? In the midst of revival, it's multiplying. Not only are we seeing souls come in, but we're seeing the revival multiply. Ottawa, Canada, boom, a year solid nightly meetings, over uh, several thousand saved in the streets alone. Not only that, now London, England, almost two months in, seeing souls all around. People come from all over the UK, and it's, and it's touching the nations because it really is an international, a, a multinational revival there. And I'm telling you that this is, this is what God does when revival breaks out. There's something that happens where God will multiply everything. He'll multiply even your, and your, your natural skills. He will multiply your skills. Revival broke out in San Diego, and suddenly God's asking me to put on a fashion show. <laughs> I was modeling, but I never put on my own fashion show. I never designed dresses, and now God's told me, I want you to put on your own run- runway show. I want you to design some dresses and bring some other designers in, and I want you to hire your own models. And I'm like, oh, God, that sounds like a big job that I've never done before, but okay. <laughs> in the midst of the beginning, the early stages of revival last year. So I do it in faith. It was a stretch, believe me. And I put my own, you know, 2000 or so dollars into it. And, uh, you know, it worked out great. And I won souls in the midst of it because I was producing it. I was directing it so I could do whatever I want. And I gave an altar call, a salvation call in the midst of my show. <laughs> so people get saved. <laughs> So then I want you to see, because that was only the starting. So, so in the midst of revival, God multiplies, right? And he'll even multiply your job, your work. I mean, some of you, you've got, you've got business, and then God's like, okay, I'm going to add this to you, and I'm going to add this to you, and I'm going to add this skill to you, and I'm going to add this craft to you, you know? And so I'm faithful with that. Then a couple months later, I get a phone call. Hey, Miranda, will you go to Iraq and bring dresses, and I'm going to fund it completely for you. It's going to be fully funded, fifteen to $20,000. It's going to be completely paid for trip. I want you to go and bring 20 dresses and you're going to go and and dress these girls that have come just out of uh, captivity from ISIS and you're going to beautify them and show them the glory of God. (laughs) Come on, when you're faithful with the little, 
God will entrust you with the much and he'll multiply in the midst of revival. So now I went from having done, you know, 10 of my own dresses and a fashion show and winning souls in the midst of it now and and investing my own money to now God's giving me the money to put on another event in Iraq where they need it, where they need beauty for ashes. They need the beauty restored to them. They need the glory fully funded. And see, this is what God will do in the midst of revival. It's the multiplication factor. I could go on and on and on, but I want to pray for you today. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray, lay hands on you because there's something that happens. I believe, I believe this with all my heart because I've seen it since I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I've seen this in effect. And because of revival, I've, I'm seeing it more and more and more. I'm telling you, this is a word for now that God wants to multiply your seed in whatever area that is. Whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in soul winning, it's in all of it. God wants to add to harvest for you. He wants to add to miracles for you. He wants to add dreams and visions and encounters to you. He wants to add destiny dreams and destiny doors to you. The multiplication factor. I want you to stand to your feet today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes it's just about doing exactly what he asks, right? So what happened in Luke 5 with the, the fishermen, the disciples, right? Jesus says, go cast out again into the deep, right? When they, they tried all night and caught nothing, but now Jesus gives the word. And boom, they catch so many fish, they can't even keep them in one boat. Same thing happens in John 21. Jesus comes to the shore, and they'd been trying to catch all night, but nothing. And now Jesus says, you just, just toss your nets out on the right side of the boat. Boom, so many that they have to pull in another boat. Like, multiplication happens when you just keep your eyes on the Father, you hear the voice of Jesus, you're touched by the Holy Spirit. So this, this afternoon, I believe God wants to just release that, that anointing, that impartation for multiplication and the faith. I, I believe that more than anything, God's going he's gonna, to he's gonna put these things in effect, the multiplication factor, but he's going to give you faith, and he is, even through the word, giving you faith to believe for the unusual, to, to believe for the multiplication, to believe for the acceleration in your life, where things have felt stagnant for some of you, where things have felt like they've been on a standstill for some of you, whether it be in your workplace, in your family, and you know you feel like you've been planting seeds witnessing for a long time with your neighbor or your family member or your coworker, and you're like oh just not getting anywhere God will accelerate it whether it's in your finances and you just felt like you've been at this this stagnant place and you're like I've been sowing I've been sowing I've been sowing I'm not seeing the breakthrough I'm telling you I believe God's going to shift some things today I'm going to believe I believe he's going to shift some things and he's going to bring that multiplication factor into effect in your life today so if you want this this morning I, I just want to encourage you to come out we're going to we're we're just going to lay hands on everyone as Steve just does whatever he wants to do. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I just want to pray first. God, I just thank you. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that, Lord, you are a God with a massive vision. God, your, your vision, God, far exceeds the stars of the universe, God. Your vision, God. Lord, for each one individually in this place and online, God, as well as, Lord, as well as, God, the bigger picture, Lord, of reaching nations and reaching cities, God, with the harvest. God, your vision far away is what we could even ask, think, or imagine. Ephesians 3.20, right? God, I ask this morning, this afternoon, Lord, that you would release an impartation, God, above all of faith. I'm telling you, that something that the Lord's given me since I was a teenager was a gift of faith. Yes, I see it in miracles, but I see it, I see it with activated and unlocking destiny things, whether it's the prophetic or things like this, believing for provision or whatever. I'm telling you, I believe God is un going to unlock faith, and some of you are going to begin to see things in your life begin to change just because, because there's a new faith in you. Faith unlocks things. Faith unlocks things. You prophesy according to your faith, the word says, right? In the same way, you, you, you'll give in, the, in according to your faith. You'll, you'll you know, pray for the sick according to your faith. So God, I thank you that today, God, above all, that you would release an impartation of faith, God.
Lord, of faith, radical faith that moves mountains, radical faith, God, Lord, that brings in harvest. Father, I thank you, God, for, Lord, that spirit of revival, God, Lord, that accelerates things, God, Lord, that accelerates harvest, that accelerates, God, miracles, signs, and wonders, God. And Lord, today I ask that you would release this on every person in this place, God. That they would begin to see, Lord, jobs overtake them, Lord. Things in their workplace, God. Lord, promotions and provisions, God. Blessings overflow and overtake them. God, they would begin to see their family members change radically, dramatically, God. In the midst of revival. The spirit of revival, multiplication taking place, God. Souls and harvest, God. Harvest, God. Release, Lord. God, faith for the harvest. The multiplication of harvest coming in, God. Lord, in this region, God, in this, in this state, God, and in this nation, God, we call forth multiplication of harvest, God. That awakening that brings harvest. So, God, I thank you today, God, that, Lord, there will be an impartation and an awakening, God, of multiplication, the promise that you gave Abraham. And, Father, if there's anything that you would ask us individually to do in order to see uh, an acceleration, just like you asked Elisha, just like, just like, you know, you Jesus paid a price, just like Abraham, just like all these... The disciples, Peter, throw your nets in on the other side, on the right side. Whatever, God, if there's something that you're asking of us in order to see the multiplication take place and acceleration, God, Lord, that we would be listening ears today. God, that we would have ears open, our hearts, our spiritual senses awaken, God, to your voice and, Lord, to anything you're asking of us, God, that we would step out in radical faith, God, no matter how, how risky it may look. Esther risked her life, but as a result, not only did she save a nation, it says, I believe in Esther 9, that that so many, so many became Jews as a result. In other words, there was such a harvest of souls as a result of her taking a risk. Mordecai, same thing. He he gave a prophetic word and boom, now he's raised a second in command just under the king. Lands and inheritance is given to both of them, Esther and Mordecai. Abundance, see, in the midst of paying a price of risk. Whatever he asks of you, laying it all down, whatever he asks of you, God will multiply far beyond you can ask or think, far beyond your wildest dreams. He will multiply in every area, just like Esther and Mordecai. It was multiplication in every area of their life or in multiple areas of their life, in authority, in position and rank, in the converts, <laughs> In so many things, in justice over the enemy, Haman was hung on his own gallows that he had built for Mordecai, right? Justice. See, that's another thing that God will multiply to you is justice where there's been injustice. I really believe it, even the, even today, that, that that's one of the things that God wants to activate is the multiplication of justice in your life. So God, I thank you that today, this is what you would release, God, that impartation, God, for that multiplication factor and ears open, God, to be 100%, Lord, hearing and obedient to your voice, God. Sensitive and obedient to your voice, God. Humble servant heart of God. Keep your eyes on the Father, Lord, on you. And God, anointing, Lord, like we started out at Isaiah 61, God, that you would anoint every person here with the spirit of the Lord, God, to do the good works of Jesus, to see the greater works, God, even greater works than these because he goes to the Father. God, that they would see these things. And God, that you would release that double portion, God, Lord, the double portion, instead of their shame, a double portion. God, so I thank you that you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you, God. And Lord, that you remove any ounce of shame, any ounce of fear, of inadequacy, of false identity, God. Lord, you remove those things from our mindsets today. And God, that you would activate and unlock faith, identity, awakening, God. 
and to who you called us to be and who you call us to, how you call us to walk out, God, to you to activate justice, freedom, freedom from shame, that double portion, God, anointing of glory, of revival and reformation, signs, wonders, and miracles, provision, God, the mind of Christ, Lord, that you release these things, God, over every person here today in Jesus' name. So we're just going to, I don't know if you guys have so the best thing to do, if you have someone in front of you, if you're in the front line here, just stay put. If you're behind, if you could take the line around the room like that, it works really well. Everyone will get prayer, and you'll be in a nice place where you can rest in what God does. So if you're not first in line here, then just go around that way and do the same here. So if someone's in front of you, then that means you need to scoot out a little bit. Leave a little bit of space between between you so there's plenty of room. And... Um, that should work just fine. I'm going to need a couple men to catch, please, and even a couple women that would that would help. So spread out. Okay, if you're cl real close to someone, it's not going to work. So take the line single file all the way around there in the end. Okay? Let's just give a big thank you to Miranda Nelson for bringing that word. Thank you so much. Awesome. It's such a great, such a great word. That God, God wants to bless you and that he's glorified in you receiving blessing. J j just say, I receive that double portion blessing. Just declare that I receive. It's the duty of kings to receive. Yeah? So, so, so just practice that kingly anointing of receiving 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 so just close just close your eyes and just enjoy the presence of the lord and and uh, miranda and the team will come and lay hands on you if you're watching online thank you so much for joining us this morning we're going to go off the air uh just to give our cameraman and media team a little bit of a break but we will be back tonight um uh, uh our last night of camp meeting and so come back tonight at 7 p.m on uh, youtube and facebook src live god bless you love you have a good day